her best friend. So yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, hi, new best friends. <laughs> you got a lot of BFF charms you're going to have to pass out later. Um, seriously, though, like about a third of the way through the book, I read this particular line, and I was like, oh, yeah, no. Oh, great, I got you. And the line is, uh, I'm going to just say it completely out of context, uh, quote, I really shine in a Taco Bell parking lot with a water bottle full of vodka. <laughs> My best self. Yeah. So, so on that note, um, I don't want to spoil the whole book for you guys because you haven't read it yet. Um, although I think you being here is kind of a spoiler because it's like, surprise, there's no Hi, the ending is this. <laughs> and then I was in a theater in Austin. Yeah. <laughs> that you share in the book. Um, I want to start, good, I'm glad you're on board. Um, I want to start with, uh, so you talk about how, you know, you performed in your first Broadway show when you were 12. I was bragging, yeah. Yeah, well, it's true though. Um, and you wrote that your brother was a big influence on you in terms of wanting to be a performer, but you also just briefly mentioned two other influences that I was like, wait, why didn't you write a whole chapter about these influences? <coughs> And those are, one, everything Bette Midler ever did. And you guys are going to love this other one. Uh, the second one is Newsies. Oh my god. Talk about a young sexual awakening. Yeah. Jack Kelly on that war Santa thing. I was like a Spot girl. Spot was the Brooklyn oh, guy. Oh, Spot Collins? Oh my Never god. Never seen a Brooklyn the bad boy. Ooh. But you know, looking back, he's real short. You guys do you have an issue with uh, short people? No, oh, yeah, I know. So we should get into that. I said I was a spot girl. Uh, so, um, anyway, you don't have to talk more about newsies. I just had to. I was it. also really into the guy with the eye patch who had like one line. You know, like he was like the hottest one. And, uh, like I'm getting deep cuts a little bit, but uh, the guy with the eye patch was super hot, and I like IMDb him a lot. <laughs> Because I'm like, seriously, like, what's he doing? Where's he at? Is he single? What's happening? What is he up to? I, not a lot, but I still IMDb him pretty regularly. Someone Google that right now, and then when it's time for the audience Q&A, bring that shit up. Um, all right. We can talk. I can talk about news all day. Um, I do want to say, though, that I think we would all sign a petition to do an all-female Newsies if you wanted to be. <gasps> Jacqueline Kelly. Jacqueline, Jacqueline Kelly. Kelly. Yeah, I do. It was a weird one for me to love as a kid because I loved it so much. And the one girl part in it sucks so bad. It She's really got is. that one. She has literally, am I, am I right here? She has one What's line. That? Think about seizing the day. That's literally all she sings in the whole movie. <laughs> and then there's that one scene where they're like, well, you got the best of your family right here. And she's like, oh my God, no. Like, that's her whole role. What the hell? It was hard for me because I really, like, identified with that movie, but I couldn't even cling to that one girl role. I really wanted to be the little kid. Uh, what's, it, what's his name? The da Les. David is the older brother. You didn't want to be crutchy? <laughs> this one's crutchy. Yeah. Yeah, crutchy, crutchy's a good crutchy. Yeah. Um, super PC. Um, all right. So, <laughs> I know. It's when you look back and you're like, mm, okay. Yeah. Um, so I think the most scandalous part in your whole book oh. is when you talk about how you auditioned for Star Search and you didn't get on the show. <laughs> that's like, I read that and I was like, I threw the book across the room. I was like, that's not, that's not true. <laughs> yeah, very briefly. How I did that happen? That. Like, why did you not make the show? I mean, I think, I feel like... <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna say this and you guys will be like, yeah, no, we didn't do that. Um, like any little kid that was growing up at that time that could kind of sing or kind of dance or whatever, like put themselves on video and sent it into Star Search. No? Okay. Um, just me then. Um, yeah, but it wasn't like I like was there and they were like, get out of here. I just like sent in a videotape and then like nothing happened. Wait, what was your song? <laughs> 
It was tomorrow for Annie, okay? What are you, okay? <laughs> I've been basic my whole life. Like, I still would have put you on the show. But maybe you should have sang, you know, seize Something the day. more original, something seize better. The day. Seize the day. Um, all right, so you were nominated for a Tony when you were 12. Um, and you. Like, you're like, yeah, I know that. I am aware. Um, so you write in your book that you actually were kind of relieved when you lost because you didn't have to give a speech that you would later look back and be horribly embarrassed by. Yeah. So I want to know, like, do you did you have a speech prepared? I didn't have a speech prepared. Like, which even, like, any version of a prepared speech would have been better than a 12-year-old girl no. who was like... It's adorable in theory, but I was like really self-aware and weird and like it would have been like I know that I would have done like a really bad impression of an adult who is also feigning surprise. You know? Like oh God, I don't have a speech prepared. Oh yeah, like uh, we, I don't want to throw shady shade around, but you guys know like there are people who feigned surprise badly and at 12 it would have been the worst version. I would have just been like really trying hard not to name names, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, um, so, um, sorry, now I'm blushing. No, I, I just like, I would have loved to have seen what 12 year old, 12 year old you would have said, like who you would have thanked, yeah. who you would have quoted, you know. Yeah, we don't have to. Yeah, probably like my parents and my stuffed animals or something. I would have done something really fucking weird. <laughs> Um, so clearly you didn't have like a typical high school experience. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you were like as a teen? And I would love for you to specifically tell the Abercrombie and Fitch shirt story that you mentioned in the book, which if you don't remember, I have it. I right do. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know, like I didn't have a, I, I feel like I, did have a really typical high school experience. It was just that I was also, you know, doing this other thing on the side. Like my my regular high school experience was kind of painfully typical, I think. Um, you know, just kind of like rampant insecurity and nobody likes me and but I'm still gonna like be really loud and weird all the time. And um, and I did uh, like I went through my <laughs> rebel phase where uh, Abercrombie and Fitch came to the main mall, which was basically Gucci to us. And uh, all the like rich kids uh, started wearing Abercrombie and Fitch, and um, I shoplifted a T-shirt and rode with a sharpie in my popular yet because I thought I was like punk rock or something. It's really embarrassing. So good. None of it's really working. So good. Thank you for telling that story. Ugh. I made you tell it. <laughs> um, okay, so after you graduated from high school, you made a film called Camp. <laughs> Lots of crossover. The Tony crowd and the camp crowd. <laughs> Nerds. Exactly. <laughs> And you talk about how that was like the closest you ever got to having like a group of neighborhood friends. Um, and you know, because it's basically, as you said, like a bunch of musical theater nerds running amok at a summer camp. Um, would you mind telling us like a story from that time? Like one of your favorite memories? Oh, um, God, I feel like if there was anything like uh, cute and anecdotal, it would have ended up in the book. <laughs> but um, uh, I don't know, well, I mean, actually, I'm trying to remember if I do even get into this in the book. I don't remember. I feel like I would, I feel like it's not in the book and I tried to get into it and it kind of didn't work, but I'll just tell you guys um, that it was my one experience like having a full on intense crush on a guy who was obviously gay, but I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily it's only happened to me once, but it was, it was, it was really sad though because like he wasn't, out and so he was like, yeah, totally. Uh, but let's take it slow. Uh, so there were like, we like listened to Nora Jones in his bunk bed. It's really romantic. And he was really, really out of 
my lead, which should have been the first tip off, like incredibly handsome, well groomed, and was like, yeah, you seem not threatening, uh, I've got a crush on you. <laughs> was that what you wanted? Yeah, that's what I wanted. <laughs> an exclusive, guys. That's not in the book, yes. Um, so, speaking of boys, there is a whole section of your book called Boys, um, and it starts, the first page is perfect because it's an illustration of JTT. So, right away, I was like, this is my favorite section. Um, so, let's have a little bit of girl talk. Yeah, just us girls. Um, earmuffs. So you yeah, boys. Uh, I have a story about earmuffs, but I'll tell you later. Um, all right. People, I had people doing that for real with their kid. They were like, earmuffs. I was like, that's in a movie. That doesn't work. <laughs> Literally. Anyway. All right. Um, so in this section, you talk a lot about your early dating experience, and um, you write about how when you were 19, you hadn't yet had a serious boyfriend. And so you did what any girl would do. You went out there and you bought a book called The Guide to Getting It On. <laughs> yes. Was that book helpful for you? <laughs> Never had any complaints. <laughs> <laughs> um, my editor didn't believe that that was a real book. And uh, so I pulled it off <laughs> and, uh, and sent her a picture and was like, still have it. <laughs> Is it all like dog-eared and stuff? Does it like flip open to the whole Like page? so well-worn? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I mean, you know, the spine is broken. But, um, yeah. I mean, it is, it's a, it's, it's like an encyclopedia. It's a large book. Well, it's just to find out. It's important. Yeah. Um, so, and I genuinely did. Like, with my first boyfriend, I was like, I'm gonna do that thing from the book. <laughs> so scholarly of you. Um, so, you know, in all seriousness, uh, I love how sex positive your book is. Um, and I have to read, there was this one passage that made me fist pump, like, so hard. I'm gonna read it real quick. Um, you wrote it, so don't applaud for me. Applaud for it. Uh, you better fucking applaud. <laughs> you wrote, um, I'm not interested in pretending to be a reluctant participant because you think girls who like sex are a turnoff. If you think girls are supposed to object to sex until they find themselves incapable of resisting your magic penis, fuck you. <laughs> standard? Yeah, that was, uh, it was really surprising. Like, I, I, I was so nervous about kind of getting into the game late. I, I mean, I think it's a perfectly acceptable age to get into the game, but uh, I just got it in my head that I, I was supposed to have done it sooner or something. And um, I, I don't know, I had like all these insecurities and stuff, and like the one thing I didn't see coming was that like I was going to be really enjoying, like genuinely enjoying myself, like being enthusiastic, wanting to try things, having a great time, initiating things, and that that would be a problem. You know, I thought that would be like, oh, I'm doing awesome, and it never occurred to me that uh, someone would be like, you're coming on a little strong and it's kind of a turn off. Oh. I know, it's so sad for me. Oh. <laughs> um, it really didn't work out for you, clearly. Yeah, and I think um, it was just, I, I didn't understand how I had gone from like, you know, like four weeks earlier, I was so insecure about the fact that I, you know, hadn't done things or, you know, whatever, and and now uh, it was like, I, I felt like I was totally getting slut-shamed by the one guy I'd had sex with. I was like, how does that work? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And it, it, it kind of, uh, it only messed with me in so far as I was worried that I would continue to encounter that. And I didn't know how to, like, reconcile with, like, you know, 
if I wanted to have sex that I would have to pretend I didn't or something like I I didn't really know how that was going to work and I and I do think that it was just an unfortunate experience or maybe I just give off a vibe that's like um don't tell me how to do this um now you have a guide you've clearly read the guide you don't need yeah yeah um so yeah it was I I think I was it was a unique experience in that normally you kind of have to do the work afterwards to figure out like why do I feel this way about that thing like why am I so fucked up and it was like when he said to me like you don't have to like initiate sex so often I was like oh no this is ruining me um, like in the moment going like oh critical damage incoming and um, I think because I was aware of that. It was something that I like, kind of worked on a lot internally. So I don't think it it had a ton of um, lasting effects any more so than like the normal stuff that is constantly like fed to us. That's like be sexually available, but don't have sex with anybody, you whore. Um, <laughs> yeah, the women are laughing. That was female laughter. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that was luckily something that. Uh, I realized pretty quickly, like, you're wrong. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna not let that uh, be my problem. Yeah. So let's talk about um, sexual relations on set. Um, and by that I mean, you write, <laughs> you're like, that's not in the book. Um, you write about how you hate doing kissing scenes. Um, which makes sense. Yeah. But you, there's one time where you were like, this time was okay. Well, it was disappointing because, like, I don't hate kissing scenes. I just, they're just neutral. Like, they, it is just yeah. not exciting. And, um, <laughs> and the one time that I was excited, it was disappointing because I didn't think to be excited about it until afterwards. Um, because I, like, went the whole day just thinking, cause it was kind of a quick uh, in and out kind of cameo thing. And like, uh, I went the whole day just thinking about like, oh, I'm working with new crew, new actors, uh, you know, be professional, like don't fuck anything up. And, and then I like got home and was like, I made out with Legolas today. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but it like literally didn't occur to me until I got home. <laughs> Maybe I'll get a deal over. Um, all right, so before we go to audience questions, I'm sorry, we gotta talk about Twilight. We gotta talk about Twilight. So, so I think you were uh, echoing the opinion of everyone uh, when you wrote, all I had to do was make jokes about how everyone was acting weird all the time. Yeah, that was my job. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you're the best part of the, <laughs> seriously. I really did, I really did have like the easiest job. Like everybody else had to figure out how to like make all that crap feel like real and important and like the stakes couldn't be higher. And I was like, why are you guys acting weird? <laughs> you guys are so weird. That was my job. <laughs> um, can you talk about, you know, you mentioned a couple of sort of your most memorable moments, uh, like either the sort of shining moment or yeah. the dead body moment. I don't know if you want to speak to either of those. Well, I mean, uh, the well, the shining's kind of the punchline to that story, so okay. oh, you ruined it. Um, <laughs> I'll leave now. <laughs> um, the d I mean, the dead body day was genuinely like one of. It was like I felt like a real little kid that day, like on set, because. Um, uh, we were in a studio and they built like a pile of dead mannequins and then we had to crawl It's a dream sequence um, for those of you who don't remember. We all saw it we um, know. It's a dream sequence and there's like a pile of dead bodies. And we're all dressed in white and um, And like they had left these like human-sized holes in the pile of man dead mannequins um, So we had to like like Legos we got clicked into our little um, dead body place, and um, and like they start the camera at the top of the pile, and it's Kristen and Robin, and they like pan down the hole, ah! and uh, we all got kind of like sprayed in blood before we uh, before we got into position, and then apparently there wasn't enough blood, so like a guy in like straight up flannel and hiker boots like gets on top of this 
pile of dead people and um, pours blood like with a bucket. Um, and it was the greatest day because I just had to like sit there and be like, oh, it's dripping on me, don't blink. Oh. Yeah, my job is so hard. <laughs> All right, um, so we are going to take audience questions. Well, the songs, uh, generally speaking, I was like, I don't think that we should put, uh, like, I'm in love with you tonight on uh, Into the Woods, because we sang it in Pitch Perfect, so. <laughs> um, and then the style's actually been really different. I feel, like, really grateful that I've sung in different styles, so I sing, uh, like, more uh, kind of folksy, almost, in Pitch Perfect, and then last five years was, like, more, like, Broadway. <laughs> pretending to be a legit soprano. I was like doing my best impression of a legit soprano. And uh, and then when I did Trolls, I like pretended to be Justin Timberlake. I was just like, and actually, here's the thing, the more I did an impression of Justin Timberlake, the more he was like, I really liked that take. <laughs> I, I want you to do that impression. No. Please? No. <laughs> that you have from your experience that will help young performers make it into the business? Oh my god! <laughs> Different and unique? Oh god, that really limits me just going, believe in yourself. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> shit. Um, uh, honestly, uh, in terms of, like, auditioning, I, I never, I was always really bad at, like, at when people would say, like, oh, I love auditioning because it's a chance to act. <laughs> um, and, you know, the thing that always helped me is casting directors would always say, like, when you walk in, we want you to be the solution to our problem. We have a problem, and we want you to be the solution to our problem. And, um, and also, like, you, I think you, a thing that I struggled with was, like, it is, I genuinely believe, like, statistically, it would have been better for me to have just taken ownership of certain choices instead of trying so desperately to intuit what I thought they would want. Like, I think I lost just as many jobs doing that. I think it would have had a better success rate if I would have just done like what I genuinely thought was the best thing and gone, yes, there's a part of my brain going, yeah, but they really want like, you know, that thing that girls do on Law and Order SVO, or whatever. Um, and uh, I don't think that uh, I was very good at getting jobs that way, so. Um, yeah. Also believe in yourself? I don't know who wrote this up. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, uh, oh. now that the book is out, have you gotten any angry calls, texts, or emails from people who are mentioned in it? And if so, what was your response? Um, actually, uh, well, my brother said, you should have checked with me. I have a reputation to protect, and you maybe seem really nice. Um, That's your brother. And wow. uh, the only, uh, I got like, someone was like, oh, I just, I'm not, I'm not going to say who. But uh, someone was like, hey, this guy texted me out of nowhere, and he was mad. And I was like, I literally mentioned him once, so he's just trying to, like, stir shit up. So fuck that guy. Was it Colin Firth? It was Colin Firth. No, I know I feel, I, I, uh, I feel like I do him such an injustice by, like, bringing that up. Because uh, a reporter told me that. She was like, oh, I accidentally used that as shorthand the other day for, like, I'm freaking out for no reason. I'm, like, doing a real Colin Firth. And I was like, oh, no. You started something, girl. Oh, you, so you can't stop it now. That wasn't even the point of the story. And yet, as I do it, too. Anyway. Sorry, Colin Firth. Question. I still call him Firth. I'm expecting a call any day. Yes, ma'am. All right, so you are an actress as well as a musical theater badass. 
And I was wondering kind of a would you rather in terms of like what you feel most like emotionally fulfilled by, if you had to give up acting or singing, which would you choose? In private? Uh, <laughs> um, but if I give up acting in private, I can never fake an orgasm. And sometimes it comes in the end. tears twice and he was like only twice since you're doing great um, uh, which only further proves to me that writers are out of their minds and uh, ter I was like really really terrified I did like uh, kind of have a freak out at my um, editor she was like I really need to talk to you about this hyphen and I was like I'm freaking out right now um, and actually uh, uh, the book came out uh, like almost exactly a week after the election. And uh, I had been really nervous about like, oh no, what if things like go crazy and people write articles and then the election happened and I was like, I think no one's gonna give a shit. <laughs> Although I think it's bullshit that the average American woman is 5'4 and their petite section starts at 5'4. That's just small shaming. <laughs> but well done, Top Top. We're all very grateful. Yeah, great. <laughs> oh, it's because of Penguin, it has candy. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my god. All right, we gotta move to the next question. Yes, ma'am. Did anybody else get me a present? <laughs> the top thing was that I was like filming the last five years at the time and I was like taking naps in a church in Harlem in between takes and like got an email that my from my agent being like, it's like in the top 10 now, no one understands what's happening. And I, and I realized that like the other people that were in the top 10, that meant that like they had to have at one point had a conversation like, <laughs> and that made me really happy. <laughs> Satisfying. Yes, sir. So, what was your favorite part about writing the book? Oh, um, actually, my favorite part was writing the bonus, the fake reading guide. Uh, it's really, it's really insightful. Yeah, it's like I wrote it like right toward the end, and um, and essentially just thought like. Oh, I just get to make fun of my own book now. Like anything that I'm worried that anybody's gonna say, I just get to say it first. And it came really easily to me, which is nerve wracking, but that was a lot of fun. I really do want a book club to follow that guide, like have that discussion. Like, especially the, there's a question involving Zach Efron and Charles Manson. Yeah, that it's a, I think it's, it's a real conversation. We gotta started. get to the bottom of it, guys. Yeah, it really is. Um, how much more time do we have? A few minutes? Two minutes, all right, everyone else, except for the two people at the microphone, I'm so sorry, please sit down. I know, I, I warned you guys, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Um, I did have two questions, well, one's not really a question. The first is kind of a statement, my friend Alicia loves you, she would love for you to say hey to her. Ew, no. <laughs> table of contents and I was like how would I know what the chapters are gonna be but it was helpful because it got me started and then I was really disappointed and surprised at how many chapters were like three sentences and I was like oh that's it <laughs> okay well gotta think of something else um, 
And uh, there were also a lot of stories that I was like, oh, this is gonna be great. And my editor was like, that's only funny to you. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, it was basically just like, also forcing myself to write something like that, I think was really helpful that I made, like I set myself on a schedule and like made myself write like 2000 words a day for a period because I was like, you just have to write something. And like, even, even if while I'm writing and I'm like, this is crap, like I'm doing it. So that was really helpful. And I have a lot of crap that's never gonna see the light of day. Yeah, <laughs> publish it later. Um, all right, make it good, no pressure. Oh no. I'm gonna end really deep. Oh, no. oh. It's not. <laughs> um, I raised the, uh, you raised this question in your book, and I really want to know the answer. Except since I read it, I was like, I gotta know. Um, so McDonald's 24 hour breakfast, year and nay. I gotta know. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nice. So we do, we do have to take a couple of questions off of uh, the Twitter. Oh, yeah. From people in other We gotta places. go to Twitter. Um, so, uh, at Olivia M. Suarez asks, do you have any go-to shower car karaoke songs? Um, shower car, I mean, very different. It's, <laughs> it's a different art form. The one thing, the shower car. Uh, the, I mean, in karaoke, I always think I know the lyrics to hit me with your best shot, and I don't, because I'm hammered. Um, and, uh, uh, shower, I feel like uh, I'm always like pretending to be a soprano in the shower because it's all steamy and you're like, oh, I sound great. And then you get out and your tone sucks and it makes you sad. And then in the car, uh, I think I'm Drake. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah, we've all been there. Uh, and then Marshall? Marshall, Marshall tweeted something too, so I said he could, he could come down here. Oh. oh, you're in person and on Twitter. Nice. Uh, living in both worlds. Uh, so, when you mentioned uh, Mr. Eyepatch from Newsies, uh, oh. as someone who has... Is it you? That's what I wanted you to say! <laughs> uh, as someone who has stayed up until 2, 3 a.m. many times on IMDb, uh, your client struck a deep nerve with me, so I decided to do some research on uh, Mr. Trey Parker, also known as uh, Eyepatch from Newsies. Oh, that's right! His name is Trey Parker, but it's not Trey Parker. It is not Trey Parker. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's really yeah. confusing and really complicated to Google search afterwards, but... Do you just refer to Trey Parker as Trey Parker from Book of Mormon? <laughs> He's also uh, done this other, he's had a TV show. Yeah. Okay. I've heard of it. No, I just love this crowd. Y'all are nervous. He hasn't acted in 10 years. His last screen credit was American Dreams, spelled with a Z. Oh. So, I mean, I think the only thing we can do is start a hashtag campaign to, to yeah. get him on screen again. I think that's going to be really confusing, though, because Trey Parker fans will be like, he's still doing stuff. <laughs> But I draw can dream. Thank you for that. Thank, Thank you. you. That was vital information. Thank you. Katie, do you have something? Uh, yes. I have from GrayRay0922, what is the weirdest thing a fan has ever said to you? Ooh. Tonight. Um, it was tonight. It was one of you guys. Uh, two, two, or, two or three days ago, I did a, a, like a little uh, meet and greet, and a, there was this little girl, super cute, and um, she like, dark black hair, and she was really sweet, and she smiled, and as she walked away, she said, I'll be praying for you. <laughs> what did she do? <laughs> what did she do? Because here's the thing, it sort of says more about me that I took offense to that, or like thought that it was weird, because she could just be like a super sweet girl who's like, I just pray for people, and you seem nice, and I'm going to keep you in my prayers or whatever, but I was like, did you just put a curse on me? <laughs> I feel like that's yeah. something that happens to you before the girl crawls out of the TV. <laughs> well, and at least here in the South, when people say, I'll pray for you, they don't mean it in a nice way. <laughs> it's yeah. like when they're like, oh, bless your heart. That's they don't mean that. They don't mean that. All right, do we have time? All right, let's be real quick, but you look awesome. You're ready. Let's go. My name is Brooke, and um, have you ever gotten embarrassed when you... Like, if you ever missed a line, did you ever get embarrassed? Oh, I got super embarrassed. I think this story is in the book when I lost a... Yeah, so I did, when I was doing um, High Society when I was 12 years old, got this job, I was so excited, like, on Broadway, I couldn't believe it, and uh, the uh, we did a rehearsal, and the, and the director... Um, 
I don't know that he liked me very much. I don't want to spread any nasty rumors, but I, I feel like he didn't like me very much. And um, we were doing this big number with like the whole cast, and everybody's like running in and out, and they're saying their lines, and they um, they uh, wanted to add back in a line from a previous draft, and they were like, okay, and we're adding in this this line, and we did the number from the top, and I missed the line, and they stopped the music, and he said, Anna just lost that line. And then we never did it again, and I was so embarrassed. Oh. I know. I tried to go out on sympathy, so that really worked. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, this is for the last one. Uh, I got you a Taco Bell gift card. Great. <laughs>